Well, hello everybody. It is Robbie from Southern California, and today I am not doing a garden tour. I'm going to do a nature walk. I can say it's quiet, but I can hear so much noise. I guess there's still gardeners working, even though it's early in the morning. But the lighting is so pretty, and you probably can't hear it. There's a hummingbird up the pine tree singing his head off. He's probably calling to me, but I already checked. The feeders are all full. Maybe his feeder isn't. I don't know. But just wanted to do just a nature walk. We don't have to talk about garden plants. Here I have a rabbit that hangs out. He was here last night and he hangs out a lot in the squirrels. But boy, I'll tell you that tool's been keeping them out. So they haven't really done any damage to the garden out here, which has been really, really nice. So I can sit out here, enjoy the rabbits and know that they're not doing anything to my garden. But I just want to walk through. It's just so pretty. It's still cloudy. There's an overcast. So the sun hasn't come out yet. It's just starting. Being the way we live, the way the house is situated, like now I can hear the gardeners using their weed whackers or whatever they're doing. You can also at times hear trains. We're not even near any trains. But it comes, comes up the canyon in a way that you can just hear the trains. Look at that. I don't think you can see that, but there's a hawk flying around. You probably can't. He's way up there. But we've got a few different species of hawks that hang out here. And it's just so funny because you'll see them fly by as either a mockingbird or a scrub jay or even a hummingbird is chasing them away. So obviously the hummingbirds do not want them near their nests. I'm going to say I think most of the hummingbirds at this point now that we're really in the summer are probably done. So I'm thinking if they've got babies, they're finishing up the last of the babies and they'll be moving about different places because you know, once they're, the babies are big enough and eating on their own, they're gonna have to spread out. So I'm not sure how many hummingbirds we'll have, but right now I'm gonna say, which I didn't know, and I'm gonna put up a video just on hummingbirds and explain a lot of research I've done and things I've learned, that there is times we have well over a thousand hummingbirds visiting the garden. Not necessarily living in the garden, but visiting the garden. We have a lot of visitors. I mean, the scrub jays come in, the mockingbirds, all the different song sparrows and, and songbirds and bush tits. And I'll, I've got a lot of footage and I'll try to drop it in because I do like to sit out here with my camera and get the different birds that pass through. But we do have a lot of birds. And then of course, not just the birds. And oh, we've had some really unusual birds. Some are really fabulous to see and they're just gorgeous. But we also have, you know, reptiles. So we do have the snakes to go through. I have not seen any rattlesnakes so far this year. But we have seen gopher snakes and racers and a few different things like that. But I do put food out, food out for the seed eaters. And the reason I do that is by bringing in the seed eaters, which are eating some of the seeds that are growing on some of my different plants, it tells the insect eaters, the ones you really want in your garden, it's safe. We're eating here, come on, join us. And that's why the bush tits come in and all the other birds, even the mockingbirds, they're not real big on seed, seeds, the mockingbirds. They're really big on insects. You'll see them with a great big grub in their mouth. So you wanna introduce that if you've got a garden. But you know, it's just so beautiful, the, all the different animals that come in. Uh, we've had different types of squirrels, of course. We've got the tree squirrels and the ground squirrels that come in. And that, you know, maybe we're not so happy with, but 
the tree squirrels don't do as much damage, in my opinion, as the ground squirrels. The ground squirrels do far more damage. And of course, I've got a lot of my water features I put up. They're not all running right now. That one's electric back there. So that one's going. And then the other one, we have two electric ones. But the solar ones, mm, not in this sunlight. The sun is starting to peek through, but they need a little more sun. And then the birds will come in and use the solar baths too. And here is, if you saw my garden tour, this is the pack rat nest. And I'm still not 100% sure. Look, he left another piece of wood on top. I'm not sure yet what we're going to do. The pack rats are very interesting. They build a great big nest, and his nest is probably under the whole step. And I've got videos of that. And this way, if a coyote found him and started digging there, they have another exit, and they would just take off and leave. They're, they are actually a native rat, unlike some of the other rats that you have that were brought in from Europe, and they just go everywhere and they create a lot of problems this is a native usa rat so they're a little different than the ones that were brought in the ones that people really have problems with can pack rats be a problem they can because of the size of their nest but as far as creating problems i'm going to have to say since i have found out he's living here and it is a male because we caught him and we checked him out, it was a male, and when we let him go, Gary had the trap back there, he went through the back of my garden and he came around, and I had a camera sitting here, and he shot back to his nest. Does he have a girlfriend? According to my cameras, no, he's on his own. I did see two when they were babies, so some of the babies found their way in here, but I guess once he started building his nest, he was just on his own, so no girlfriend at this moment. As I was saying, I was losing tomatoes here and there, the ones that don't have any tool or anything around them, and I don't worry about you know some of that happening. I've had less damage now that I know he's here than I had before. And what I'm thinking is they're very territorial. So if he's living here, and in the middle of the night he hears something scurrying around, I'm thinking he may be driving the other rodents let's say other rats or mice out and that is a possibility and if that's going on that's a good thing for me I can get rid of him at any time as long as he's not coming in the house causing any problems I don't see him during the day in fact if you check the cameras he doesn't even seem to come out until midnight a lot of times so I don't know he really sleeps in late he comes to, I guess you could say and then he gets up at midnight and he starts roaming around he brings back bits and pieces. Uh, yesterday he cut off some of the mint. I wish he'd cut off a whole lot more. And he was piling mint on the step. Now it's gone, so he put it in his nest. The reason that a lot of these animals, let's say this rat, grabs mint, is mint can be a repellent to, let's say, fleas or mites. And so they build a lot of vegetation in there that will repel insects on them. They're really smart, smart creatures when you think about it. So he's been dragging bits and pieces of mint, and of course he's got all the wood chips he wants, and he piles them on the step, and then he picks the piece he needs, and he builds his nest. So for now, I'm going to leave him. He's Like I said, he's not bothering me. In fact, I haven't even seen any other rats, and I'm wondering if he is driving them off. But it's just so beautiful here with the birds and everything. And I am leaving a lot of seed heads on my plants. As you can see, we can walk back here. I want to make sure there's no snakes because I'm still trying to clear everything up. See, this is all, let's call it bird damage, even though it's not damage. They're coming in here and they're opening this up. And then they're eating the seeds. So that's the seed eaters. And that's okay because I'm not going to use this. That's just plain old collared and it's probably hybridized and cross-pollinated with other things, so who knows what it would end up being. So let them do their thing. I did trim a lot down because once you trim that down, the leaves will get big. So I left that back there and I trimmed a little bit off the dazzling blue kale. So that will come back the leaves. But I'm gonna leave a lot for the birds because to me, the birds need something. We have weed abatement in our area. Let me see if I can swing you around. And see, they've been clearing the hills, even though they just cleared them and they grew back. 
So they're going to probably make everybody clear the hills again. But, you know, they need food. And so I feel I might as well do my part and just leave some of the seed heads. There has been a lot of rabbits this year. I have not seen any more skunks for a while. We saw one. See, here's more seed heads off the dazzling blue kale. This is beautiful. And once you pull the seed heads off, I'll get the big leaves again. But I haven't seen skunks. I haven't seen raccoons in years. And I think most of those are gone due to the overpopulation of coyotes. Anything on the ground, pretty much the coyotes have wiped out. They're even wiping out a lot of the bobcats. Even though a bobcat itself can get away, the problem with that is the cubs can't. They wouldn't know, and so a lot of the kittens have been wiped out. I um, have been told by my neighbor that there's been a cougar roaming around, and unfortunately, I did not have a camera on me at the moment, but I believe I saw a cougar go through here the other day. I couldn't figure out at first what it was. The crow, I should say crows, the ravens were beaten up on it, and it went across the hill further down. There's a path there. He went across, and it wasn't a coyote. It wasn't a dog. And I thought it was a deer, but I never saw the head because the deer go through here. So it was very confusing to me as to what it was because it was shiny, really shiny and, and brown. And when it got to a certain part of the ridge, it leaped, which, and it did not gate like a coyote gates. It smoothly walked across. So I guess I did see it because they said they've seen it twice. Haven't seen them in my garden. And that was the only time I might have seen it. But otherwise, you know, the birds are just coming in, all different species. There's a few that haven't come in yet. I have not seen the spice finch finches for a while. Look at this. Let me see, I might have zoom in. I have a candlestick solar fountain. Oh, the solar fountains are going on now. They're taking a bath. Let's zoom in on the bath for a minute. Now that is a candlestick that I found at the thrift store. It's just in a glass bowl. I think I'm going to redo it. And you could easily put the rubber tubing up from any type of fountain you've got. And all I had to do is on the top, just drill a hole and I just made the hole big enough to push through the plastic tube. I used a Dremel. And they love it. They come and sit on top and take a bath. These are goldfinches. They're either females or very, very young birds. I've seen some young ones that look like females, but they're singing. So they would be a young male not colored up yet. Is that beautiful? Let's stop and watch this for a minute. He's literally 10 feet from me, and he's still going to come in and take a bath. Oh my gosh. That is so cute. And this is what I love about gardening. I'm not crazy about the weed whackers and stuff, but you know, what are you gonna do? Oh my gosh, there's four of them already. They're going up and about, and I think everybody should put some sort of water out. Now they like moving water. There's a young, is that a male? Let's see if we can go back in. Again, this is a nature walk, so I'm not talking really about gardening. I'm talking about the animals that are coming in. No, these are probably a bunch of young ones. Now that's a male. Now it could be a young male. No, it's a male. See, See how cool that is? A candlestick. And the pump actually fits underneath, but if it didn't fit underneath the candlestick, I could have just sat it inside that bowl with rocks. I'm going to try to get a lot more videos up on how to make these because they're really so simple to make and so much fun. Oh my, I think the earth is shaking underneath me. I'll have to go check that out. Anybody can make a water feature, especially with moving water. Moving water brings twice as many birds, they say, because they can hear it, they know it's there, and moving water is usually fresher. I'm gonna have to say that out of all the fountains that I've got that move, even if they just move during the day here and there, the thing is, I have never gotten any mosquito larvae in any of those. 
And that's what's really so cool about it. Sitting water, yes, you'll end up with mosquito larvae, but there's something about the mosquito larvae can't seem to live in moving water. Oh, there's a lizard on the ground. Let's see if we can look at the lizard. They hang out too, look at that. Let's zoom in on him. There he is. He sees me. You know, they're almost tame. My daughter said when she waters her yard, they come out and she said they're so tame. Isn't that cute? And they hang around, of course, where there's water too, because water is important to all animals. As I always say, water is life. Look at them. They're very territorial also. If I would be walking through here and there was another lizard and I accidentally chased him towards that one, he would just chase him off. Just absolutely chase them off because they have a certain amount of square foot distance that belongs to them and nobody else is supposed to go in it and they do this pump action to let you know that this is mine and I'm big and strong and I'm gonna get you All right, let's keep walking I don't want to make this too long and see before that rat was here I was losing strawberries unless I you know put a tool or something and I've noticed since that pack rats here Things are not disappearing. And I'm going to think he must go out on patrol and he's chasing off anything because he's decided this is his yard. And if he's going to work for me, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the only thing I think he's done is taken some dinosaur kill, that pack rat. Okay, now we're out in the parking lot. And I'm starting to think at some point, I may do something out here. Right now we have the squirrels, the coyotes have come and chewed up our hose before. They didn't do it, but they did it to a neighbor. And what it is, it's not the adults, it's the babies. When they have their pups and they are not ready to hunt yet, they don't know how to hunt, the parents park them somewhere. And they were parking them here in this great big lot that we've got here that we park our cars in and do different things. And the truckloads of wood chips would come here. They would park them here and they'd say, oh, look, a hose. And they would chew it up, their puppies, while they're waiting for mom and dad to come back. And... That's why I haven't done too much back here yet. I would, we're thinking of fencing it and maybe letting our healers run back here and that would keep them out. But right now, it's still fine. We've got our truck bed and of course, let's swing around the wall. Have not done anything much with that, but the moringa tree brings birds in and the birds hang out in there. And the rabbits have been eating some of the Swiss chard. So we've got that going on, but otherwise, this is just an open area and I was thinking, wow, you can make paths and all kinds of stuff. Oh, over here. I have talked about this. That is the nest box that Gary put up. I found the nest box at a thrift store and Gary put that up and the wrens nested in it and they, they had one baby only. I don't think there's anything in it, but we could take a peek. But that baby grew up and he's gone. But let's go take a peek and see what's in there. Nope, nothing in here. Gary cleaned it out because they won't, a lot of them, the wrens, want to come back in a clean nest or they won't nest. So he cleaned it out and they don't usually repeat the same year. So they'll probably come back next spring. Oh, I'm sure they will. And they'll nest in this beautiful tree of life, this pepper tree. The pepper tree that split in half, oh, about eight years ago. And Gary thought he was going to have to take it out. And then when the wood chips started coming and it held water, the tree just came back to life. So that's been an amazing tree. I hear the scrub jay. I love scrub jays. Oh my gosh. I can tell you a story about scrub jays. They're flying around. And I really love photographing the scrub jays. They're just, they're one of my favorite birds. When I was a kid, uh, I don't want to get into too many stories like that, but I wasn't allowed to have a dog because my mom was afraid of dogs. So I had hamsters and I used to raise hamsters. So I want to get into that. I was a little kid with hamsters, but I would sit in the garage at night, not night, during the day, I should say. I did sit in there at night, but during the day and I made friends with a scrub jay that would come into the garage and I would hand him sunflower seeds. And he was just like my favorite thing. And 
did that for years and he would just come in and he knew I was out there with the hamsters and he would come and take it out of my hand so that's why I have a soft spot for scrub jays because they were so special to me growing up as a little kid and these trees I can hear that's full of birds we've had woodpeckers and earlier see the sun is starting to come out a little bit up on that pole here that's on the end of the property over there there were turkey vultures I have never seen them park themselves like that there before a pair of turkey vultures and that was actually exciting to run out with the camera and get some photos of them they are massive when they fly I've actually seen one come down on the street when I was driving home one day and they grabbed something that was run over it looked like a ground squirrel and he just dive bomb straight in front of the car and we both stopped there I was going one way and another car was going another way and we both stopped of course you never have the camera in that split second when you need it and he just hit the ground and he grabbed the flattened tree squirrel um, it wasn't a tree squirrel ground squirrel and he took off and that's what they do they fly around all day looking for roadkill and that's how they get a lot of their you know food which is really neat when you think about it and that was beautiful we do have a lot of, of uh, turkey vultures here but I've never seen them land like they did and just kind of hang out so that was really really beautiful well, let's take a hike down and let's see story I should do storytelling I probably would get tons of thumbs down and people screaming they don't want to hear it Cause boy do I have stories but yes I used to raise hamsters and I could tell you a story how my mind worked with hamsters you know what I can tell it to you real quick as I hike down as a little kid I got some hamsters <laughs> this is a funny story and I started to raise hamsters and I used to hang out at farmers market that was my hangout what was I ate and some of those hamsters would come back and you know people would return them because they were sick and they had to return them and or they died and they wanted their money back and I had analyzed what was going on with those hamsters. So I talked to Ralph, who was the manager of both pet stores at the time. There were two, but only one carried hamsters. The other one did a lot of dog stuff. And I told him, I'm not going to get it. It's such a long, elaborate story how he studied hamsters as a kid. But I told him, I guaranteed him, if he bought hamsters from me, his hamsters would not die. I pestered that guy for six months until he was so sick of taking back everything that he bought my hamsters and found out my hamsters were the healthiest hamsters and that's because I analyzed and knew exactly how to raise them so they'd have a long healthy life and it worked here is Gary's beehive I've been an animal lover since I was a little little kid and that is the beehive you've probably seen the story and if you're interested go check out the video he built that box <laughs> he worked in the garage he painted it and built it and he was going to put it up a palm tree which he did i don't want to be in their path that they're flying and they are flying and working now but he built that box because he wanted some owls to come but there were also amazons that had been hanging around so he figured whoever gets it first an owl or an amazon was perfectly fine with him and it wasn't even a week it was literally days he had put it I don't know how many feet up in the air 20 30 feet up in the air he climbed up the palm tree that we have out front the bees swarmed there you can see the whole video on it this was no joke it was all real that we did but the bees swarmed and they found it they were in heaven and they went in there and guess who else was in heaven Gary because he wanted bees and I said we don't need beehives so now he climbed up that tree in the middle of the night pulled the beehive down then he didn't like where he put it and during the day he moved it and he said these are the most mellow bees he's been going in and out of that box Gary yeah not the bees Gary until the bees probably got sick of him he has not knock on wood been stung at all and they sealed the top so he can't lift the top up anymore but he's very happy with his bees and he got a beehive from one of the neighbors and it's in pieces so he's got to put it together and he's hoping they're going to split off because he said he's checked it and it's full so I think we're going to continue on but there his bees are doing fine he's got them under this ficus tree so they'll be perfect in the heat of the summer and as you can see they are really working and going right now they're going to my garden but as well they're going to the pepper tree this is when it's split in half and it's been flowering and they are just working they're a little 
wings off going back and forth. But yeah, that's Gary's pride and joy, his bees. And this is where the rabbit, uh, she had some babies here and she had them hanging out here and you would see the baby rabbits. This is a perfect bush. I'm just fascinated that these rabbits have these babies out in the open and the coyotes don't find them. So there must be something that they do that the coyotes do not smell them. I don't know that much. I haven't done any real recent studies or anything, but this is just amazing. They had literally had babies out in the open. They had them out. Well, in Gary's garden, there was baby rabbits, but here they've had, ba oh, they've had baby rabbits everywhere. And of course, Gary did pile this here, which gives a lot of coverage to rabbits and squirrels and different things. This is what he's not using right now. So he piled it in a way that they could hang out. We actually used to have a bobcat hang out here and saw that quite a few times, but I haven't seen it lately. So he's either moved on or he's hiding all the time. But yes, there's been a lot, there is a lot of rabbits here even in the evening. I come out here, they're all over here, but the babies, they're so cute. They've been hanging out in the plant. Okay, let's keep walking. What else do we have here besides grasshoppers? Not real thrilled on them. Isn't that something? Grasshopper flies towards me, I'll run. Grasshoppers I'm not big on. Not too many garden spiders. But then they may come in later in the fall. And there's the backside actually of my garden. This is where Gary sifts and works with his wood chips. Here's a pile that's slowly breaking down. You got all the microbes and everything in there and this stuff you can just grow in now. It's just beautiful. Just gorgeous. I have to do one just on wood chips. How people have asked, you know, are you getting any more wood chips? We don't need any more. You know, we've already created topsoil. As you saw when we hiked down, you can see the hillside there. It's just all clay. And you can't grow in it. And you think about all the movement they did when they built houses here and other places they move and you end up with all this soil that is just the undersoil, which is not really good to grow on. All the topsoil has been removed and that's been the issue. Then you go to try to grow in it and there isn't really any topsoil because everything got moved. You think of nature, nature, you've got trees, the trees drop their leaves and it continues to build topsoil. So you always have beautiful topsoil where the plants are growing. Well, that's what you're doing with the wood chips. You're putting back the topsoil that's gone. And once you put it back, if you do chop and drop, basically you clear your trees and you drop the leaves down and you let them decay and go back into the ground, you're creating your own topsoil. So if you do it right, you won't need to bring in any more wood chips. You could refresh it in certain areas, but he's got probably enough wood chips to last us forever. So we don't need any more wood chips. Look at the wood chips. You think he doesn't have enough? He's still moving him where he wants. But this is all new topsoil underneath. The top layer, like I always say, the top layer is not going to break down. But anything underneath, that's in, and it's got to be a damp area. See how it's dusty under there? If this was wet, it would break down right away. Anything that's not on top is what's breaking down. Then we've got this gully that if it rains, we get a lot of water. We don't hike down there. There is poison oak down, a uh, poison, yes, poison oak is down there, but we do get the loquats that come and you know on that tree and we have collected that. But this is like a little haven, probably where the bobcat would wander through because he's been coming out like we've seen him there and it's an easy place to kind of go through and travel. And that's, let's see it. Now we're down in Gary's garden. This is an avocado tree that's probably coming up from the bottom and it's actually made a big comeback. It was, it looked like a dead stick. And now that he's piled all the wood chips, it's just started to come back. And then some wild tomatoes, wild volunteers. He's gonna try to stake those up or something. It's full of tomatoes. Came up in the wood chips. And then he's got his trees that he's planted. This is asparaga. And see, that's the seeds. It's starting to form seeds. And you'll have a whole bunch of little black seeds in there and you can plant those. And the first year you don't want to eat them. They're just gonna come up like little nothings. But then the second year and the third year, that's when it starts to build. So we really haven't eaten a lot of asparagus, just a few here and there. I don't even know what berries he's got. He's all got all kinds of berries in here. And we have been eating berries. Oh my gosh, I've made something with these berries that are so good. 
he's brought up the berries and I take a fresh lemon from the garden and I blend it up in a blender, like half a lemon with a little sugar and throw in a handful of berries and then I put it through a strainer with some water and you've got yourself the most wonderful type of lemonade or tea, whatever you want to call it. That has been so good. And just think, it's fresh from the garden, it's not cooked, you got all your nutrients and everything you want in it. Yes, I did put sugar in, but you know, I couldn't put stevia. I didn't even think about that. And that might have helped, but lemon's so tart that I figured I'd put a little sugar in. I got tons of sugar for the hummingbirds. We have thousands, we had figured out at times, of hummingbirds. I didn't even realize that. And I do a video I'm gonna get together just on hummingbirds, but I had no idea with the amount of hummingbirds. I just went back last week and bought another 75 pounds because it was such a good price of sugar because I don't want to run out because we go through so much sugar with the hummingbirds. And they depend on us. They're not necessarily living in the garden, the hummingbirds, but they're visiting the garden. And they know that if they can't find enough food, they know they can come, they know where the feeders are, and that has been really, really good. I'm going to walk into Gary's garden and finish up my little tour and I'll be sure if I didn't talk about something, I'll get it in there. I didn't talk about stink bugs and they're good. They eat things that are not from the garden. So I'll get some footage of the stink bugs that we've got. And Gary's been working in here and building. He's crazy about his ponds. That's his thing now. He started one and he just went wild over it and he's got his fish in there. See, look at that. We have almost no sun, and yet the solar pump is going. And that's where he's got his solar panel. And I don't spend enough time in here. I need to get a chair in here. He's probably got a chair somewhere. And sit down here and just have a cup of coffee or tea or raspberry, lemon, iced tea. And just sit here and watch because, oh, there's a hummingbird. Let's take a look. Nope, he sees me. Oh, he's probably trying to tell me his feeder's empty. You know those things, empty those feeders all day. But I do see them foraging through the yard, looking for insects, looking for pollen. They go into all my flowers. They, and Gary told me that he's had a lot of hummingbirds here. So they go into all kinds of flowers. I mean, here's, you've got south thistle growing, which Gary leaves for the birds. But we also use that in green drinks. And even if I'm making, let's say, scrambled eggs or something, you know, this is all for us and the birds. So you've got them foraging all day. Believe you me, I know some people say, oh, you're feeding them. They're not doing anything but just eating the sugar water. They are not, they could not live that way. And if I was killing them, we wouldn't have built our numbers up from one little hummingbird to now a thousand plus hummingbirds. But there is Gary. And I'm almost done with my walkabout just talking about nature. Probably forgot a lot of what I was gonna talk about. And, but I've got footage I'll drop in. What do you have to say? Have you seen the dragonflies this morning? So I got Gary to come closer since we've got weed whackers and people doing things. So what's going on in your garden? The hummingbirds are moving around. Hummingbirds? Yeah, I saw, we just saw one. We saw one sitting up on top. The sun's just starting to come out, so the dragonflies aren't here yet. So once the dragonflies move in, the hummingbirds tend to stay away. So Where have the dragonflies been hanging out? Which the pond? The main pond, the first well, Let's pond. walk over there. I really need to get down here, but the problem is by the time I have time, oh, look at your pepinos. Okay, this is not a garden tour. <laughs> um, by the time I've got time, it's already late in the day and then I'm watering or doing stuff in the garden. <gasps> Look at that. You can't even see your pond anymore. No, you can barely see it. The sweet potatoes are growing in. I see the fish. What type of fish do you have in here? Rosy red minnows and gambusia. And they live together? They're they fine live together? They together. They're peaceful. As far as I can see, they both have had babies, so they're getting along. Oh, wow, one is a live bear and one's an egg layer. That's right. So what, what is this here? That's water celery. It looks like celery. Isn't that something? Is it in the celery family at all? No, 
It's not. That's what I got from the Korean market. Wow, that is really nice. This pond is quite huge and yet you can't see it anymore. It's completely covered. Oh, I hear the Orioles. It's completely covered. We'll talk about that in a second. The pond goes all the way out to almost here, doesn't it? Yeah, it goes out to... Here's the edge of the pond. And that's okay to let it over... That's the edge? Yep, that's the edge. And that's okay to let it overgrow like that? Ah. Uh-oh, is that... No, he, he's emerged. Oh, this is... Okay, so tell us what this is. That's a dr That's the exoskeleton or the skeleton of a dragonfly nymph. So it's basically like a cocoon, and you can split that open. I can see there's nothing yep, in it. He's already oh. climbed out. He climbed. Isn't that awful? <laughs> well, I've been waiting for to see them up here. So I, they're not necessarily climbing up. They're going into the leaves too. They're going into the leaves. I, I was thinking. Oh, they're hanging out on the stems of the leaves. I was thinking they were going to climb up here, and I would see them up here drying themselves. But that didn't happen. Now you know. Now you I didn't know. know this? No, I did not. So we did this like I can see that there's it's empty inside. Yep. Isn't that is is that the oddest thing that he has legs and then all of a sudden he climbs out and there's it's all wings. Oh my gosh. That, you should keep that and take a photo yeah, of it. Yeah, I will. I'm, this is awesome because I've found the, some this size over there, but not in here. But the ones you found over there were still in there. Still in there? In their, I don't know what you would call that, their body. <laughs> they're, they're climbing in and out of my filter for my solar panel. So they climb in, feed, and then the next day they could be gone. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. So you're hanging out here waiting for them to go up this bamboo you gave them and they found out the sweet potato stems are just as good. Yeah, I'm looking in the wrong place. See, aren't you glad I came down here? I am. So it's empty. This is just that, a that shell is. like as if a snake would just lose its skin. Shed its skin and away they go. But this is so odd because it looks like they left their head. So they had a new head or is that open? No, you that, open? this is the outside skin. I don't know yes. if I can open that up. Oh my goodness, there's so nothing in it. So they peel out the back. So they come out from the back and the new head comes out with it. Wow, well now you know why you had so many here yesterday. Yeah. They're they coming, and they you must, can... Go ahead. Go on. They must have been coming out yesterday. Because you said they were flying around and fighting with each other and trying to create a ter territory and... They were all climbing out, so they're just climbing on all the stems that you've got here. And Wow, so see, everything you read in books so isn't I, always true. <laughs> I don't know if there's still one in here. There was this morning, but he was climbing around. Maybe that was him. Do they come out that quick? They, I guess they can. No, he's gone. Okay, but he could have been climbing in and out of the pond, right? He's, they've been climbing in and out of my basket here. Right, but he could go back in the pond. Go Can they the pond. live at this stage before they come out of their shell? Can they live out of water or they still need water? I believe they still need water. Okay. Wow, so they're climbing out into the wild sweet potatoes and they're just drying off, which makes sense because if they climbed up on the sticks, they'd be out in the open. Something could grab them and eat them. But if they find cover, then they would be safer, actually. Yeah, they'd be safer. But yet they say everything you've read that they want sticks to climb out on. See? You have to discover some stuff for yourself. Not all are created equal. Okay, wait a minute. We're going to have to zoom in on this. Okay, so we had to stop and look at him. This is a male. And he's hanging out, waiting for me to leave, because he's got babies in there. And I came out with the camera, and I've got great footage of those babies, and I'm gonna drop that in right now. They have three babies that are inside 
they wove a nest inside the banana leaf and they are raising their babies. This is like their second or third clutch. So they've had enough food. If they have enough food, they can do multiple clutches. And they are raising right now three. I don't know how many were in the other nests. I don't know if it was two, three or what, but this particular one's got three and it's just been beautiful to watch. And I waited till they were gone and I carefully raised a small camera on a stick very slowly. And I did it and Gary did it and we got some footage and it was just beautiful. And it was just, oh my gosh. I, and I did it very carefully. I didn't want to try to unweave or do anything. I just wanted to, you know, you don't want to mess with their nest. But just raise it up where I could see the babies and the babies could see, they could see the camera, but they couldn't see us because the camera went above their head and that was it. So that's what's going on in his bananas. Isn't that amazing? That's what's so beautiful. They found the bananas bushes or trees or whatever you want to call these, the plants. And the Orioles just come back here now. Last year, every year, they're going to come back here and just have all their babies here. And then the babies can hang out because in the beginning when they first come out, they can barely fly, but they're learning. And then, of course, I've got the feeders right up there for the hummingbirds and they all feed in there. And that's what's been so wonderful. All right, Gary, do you have bananas? Is this the start of more bananas? I see bananas. Yes, I've got bananas everywhere. That's, that's a young bunch. Okay. It's, still, it's flowering still. Wow. Oh, yes, I see some more there. This is not a garden tour, so I goofed, but that's okay. We're just going to look at the bananas real quick. Nice. Bananas are so fascinating. Now my daughter wants, oh, there's another nest. Yeah, that's the old Oriole nest. Oh, that's the old one. No, no babies in there. I've already used that one. I can't get. Okay, so there's, this one is empty. That's okay. You don't have to do anything. Oh, look at that. And, and there's another nest. That's a, either a toey or a house finch nest. Is that amazing? They're all nesting in here. That is so cool. I didn't see that nest before. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna step out. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that one's, they already used that and it's moved on some time ago. Well, we're now we're gonna be going into the heat of the summer. So a lot of these birds will be done now or finishing off like the Orioles. I doubt they'll do another nest. Not if it gets hot. No, I don't think so. They've done at least two. I'm, I believe it's the same pair that nested here. Oh, so they moved over to a new nest. Yeah, they moved over. Wow. Well, that was it. Kind of walked around. No dragonflies right now, but maybe I'll come back before I put this together and get some footage of the dragonflies if they come out. Let's see what's going on over here. See all this, you've got your bees. Love this from the onions. And then you've got all the seeds for the birds. Here's lemon verbena. You'll have all kinds of stuff feeding out of the flowers on there. Look at the flowers on the lemon verbena. See, this is for bees. This is for a little native bees, native insects, hummingbirds. That, that Oriole is screaming. She wants us, he and she want us out. And we do leave a lot of this to go wild because it is to us, it's important for nature. We harvest and use it as we need it for food. Here's tree color. See, and some of it's being eaten, and a lot of this is birds, by the way. It's not just caterpillars. A lot of it is birds. They will come and they'll chew on the tops. And then we could have some caterpillars, and that's okay because if we don't have caterpillars, then we don't have food for the Orioles. So it all works together. So you, some insects is okay. Everybody does things differently. Everybody does their garden differently. Some people don't like that we don't trim. Some people want to chop and drop everything and trim everything back to get big leaves. And that's great if that's what you want and that's what you need. For us, we harvest daily as we need for our own food and then we leave the rest for nature. To me, nature, like I said, I, I've been an animal lover since I was a little, little kid. And that has always been so important to me to help nature out. As a little kid, I was out there putting bird seed out and bread and different things. And I, we want to help them as much as we can. And there's not as much flowers and different things around. 
like there used to be. So if I can do that, I can do my little bit for nature and keep the hummingbirds and keep the insects going. Because if you don't have insects, well, after all, this is what a lot of the birds and the other animals need. So you've got to work with both. What you need is a balance. And I think, thank goodness, we have created a balance. It may look like a jungle here. It may look like a mess, but there is a balance. Nothing's being eaten to the ground. Nothing is going to stop producing as far as the plants because there's a wonderful balance. You've got the insects coming in, eating a little bit. You've got all the birds coming in, eating the insects. So you need both. You absolutely need both. And that's the way we do our thing. And if we don't use it, and you've got bottom leaves that, let's say, are brown, that just goes back to the ground. And that's how topsoil is created. So whatever you don't use, it's chop and drop, put it back, it will decay, and you'll end up with so much soil. I mean, this is how we're ending up with all this. And the plants love it. So I think with that, I'll let Gary go back and trim. Are you trimming ubes? Yeah, I'm getting them started. I'm running them up. Oh, that's right, because they'll be coming out. They're just starting to grow. And I'm going to get out of here and let the Oriole do its thing. It wants to go back and feed its babies. I'm going to double check the hummingbird feeders and make sure there's plenty of food in there because they're feeding out of that. I'm having such fun with them. I've been making the funniest hummingbird feeders. And of course, I make the holes big enough so the Orioles can get in there and do their thing. And they're eating out of anything I put out there. It's so funny. I go out there with something and they all come and check it out to see what I've put out there. They are used to me. They know I'm putting food out, so they will try almost anything, and I, I'm just having a blast with that. So I'm having fun. Anyways, with that, I hope I entertained you a little bit, and if I didn't, I'm sorry. I really don't want to do a garden tour today. I just want to show nature and talk about nature, and this is what we enjoy, and it's very much a stress reliever, believe you me, to see nature and to help them out. Plus, they're helping us out. They're our workers. They're the ones that are getting rid of all the insects off our garden. If we didn't have them, we would be doing like we did many years ago, trying to think of what are we gonna spray? What are we gonna do? Oh, the plant's dead. We gotta take it all out. It's full of insects. We can't get rid of it. We don't go through that anymore. We do not go through that anymore. There are insects, the birds take care of it. And that's the way it should be. And other insects take care of other insects as well. So with that, have a wonderful day. I think you can hear the Orioles. She's feeding her babies. Mom and dad just took off. So with that, have a wonderful day. Enjoy nature. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, now as I'm sitting here, Mom and Dad have gone back and forth close to 10 times in a matter of 15 minutes. Now, can you imagine how many insects that they're actually cleaning out of my garden and Gary's and wherever else they can find? You've got Mom going from underneath. She's going underneath the leaf into that nest that's there, and then she leaves, and it's seconds. They're so fast, and those babies are big. They're good size, so they need to feed them all day. They collect insects. If you look in their mouth, I've got some footage. You can see their mouth has got grubs in it, as well as greens. They eat a little bit of everything. And then they go to the hummingbird feeders. I want to talk quietly because I'm sitting in Gary's garden filming them. And they collect nectar out of that. And then they feed their babies, both of them, everything, because that's what they eat. They eat both. They eat nectar, pollen, greens, and insects. Fascinating, beautiful birds.